hello and welcome to my channel so sweet samuel this is episode nine so welcome back if you are a returning viewer and welcome to any new viewers that are joining me today um so it's been quite a long time since i've recorded i've been meaning to record for ages but life's just been a bit manic here so i'm going to get straight into this because i haven't got a lot of time this morning i've got quite a few things to show you that's another reason why Oh, I'm terrible. I flip from one thing to another. I start a project and I'm quite a monogamous knitter. You know, I've only got one garment on the go. I tend to have two pairs of socks on the go, but then I might start making a toy or I might start some embroidery or something and then nothing seems to sort of get finished. So I thought I might as well wait until I've got a few bits done. But I do hope to come back a lot sooner because I have will have something to show you probably next week. So it might just be a really short and sweet video next week um, because I'm in the process of knitting a toy for somebody and I need that ready for the end of the month. So anyway, I have some socks to show you. I'm taking part in the Crazy Sock Ladies Sock Camp. Um, I'm not taking part in it officially because I don't understand how I... Um, submit what I've made or show what I've made so I'm just showing it really in my knitting group but I thought I'd show you so I've got two pairs of socks here that I've knit I think I've shown you these before they're the crown socks so they've just got some a pretty detail on the top that looks like a crown it should have had it down here as well across the foot but I didn't bother with that um so I have got two <laughs> this is yarn my friend Helen gave me for Christmas and it was by the Bobbin Sisters I think they're quite a new dyeing company um, I can't now remember what this yarn was called Candy Floss rings a bell but I don't think it was Candy Floss but it might have been but it's really pretty I mean it's just um, a vanilla sock other than that little detail there but the colours are really pretty and then I just did the slip stitch heel and quite a short leg again I think I do about seven in no six inches for the leg and then I do seven inches for the foot until I get to the toe but they're really pretty so they are for me and then the same pattern I've done a pair for my sister and this is commercial yarn that she gave me it was yarn I had brought for her um, and then unfortunately, due to health reasons, she's not able to knit anymore. So she's given me all her sock yarn and I'm just in the process of knitting it all up for her. So this is a pair for her. So again, a really pretty yarn because it's sort of self-patterning. And again, the same slip stitch heel, which is lovely. I knit hers on a slightly bigger needle. So I do mine on a 2.5 and I did do do mine on the 2.5 and for my sister I'm doing them on the 2.75 um, so again I have two of those and then I do have another pair I've got one finished and one not quite finished and this yarn is from the Dotty Knitting Company and it's a self-striping yarn and oh my goodness it is gorgeous so I've done a contrast heel flap and toe and then I'm just knitting a vanilla sock and I love it. This is my first real pair of self-striping socks I've done and I absolutely love it. So the other one I am nearly, well, I've probably got quite a few rounds to go yet, but I'm not far off of doing the toe now and the same heel, um, slip stitch heel. So they are lovely and I will have enough left to do another shorty shorty pair. So they are lovely. Um, and I, oh, and of the ones I did for my sister, I've got all that left. So I was talking to my mum and I might get some gray off of my mum and do a contrast gray heel flap and cuff for another pair of socks and then use this again. Um, and I will have enough of my wool as well and I taught myself a few weeks ago I taught myself how to do the magic loop I've never done that before that was like the dark art to me but I'm really enjoying doing the magic loop actually I know that's quite controversial but I'm really enjoying doing that so that's my socks um, I've got loads of sock yarn so socks will always be on my needle because they're just nice and easy aren't they 
The next thing I'm knitting, I haven't got much to show you, but I've shown you the pattern before and it's from the uh, Susan Crawford book. And I started knitting it and Milo, shh, 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 come here, come here. Sorry, I'm downstairs because it's too hot to be up in the loft. He's probably going to be barking, I do apologise. Milo, come here, come here, come here, come here. Shh, 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 shh. Um, and it's a jumper. I haven't done very much. I've got about a centimetre go to go before I start doing the sleeve. So this is knit bottom up and I was looking at the pattern last night and it's quite a confusing pattern but I think once I start doing it I'll be okay. And I'm knitting this. Milo, shh, come here. Get me a toy. Where's your toys? Get a toy. Knitting this in Starcraft Recreate and it's really lovely. Yeah. Sorry, there's going to be a pan move in this. It is beautiful. It is, I don't know if I told you about this before, but it's recycled yarn. Um, let me tell you what it's made from. Um, so Starcraft is dedicated to adding yarns to their collection that have less of an impact on the environment. And we're proud to introduce Recreate. Let me take you with me and see what he wants. Milo, what's that? Say hello. Say hello. Noisy. Where is it? Where's your toy? I don't know what he wants. Sorry. Come on. Sorry, that's a nice shot of my hand there, wasn't it? Denise, go get it. Say hello. Say I'm very noisy. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is um, Recreate Yarn, which is, oops, put you back. It's made from recycled, upcycled and reused fibre. So Recreate is a blended yarn that's 40% wool from recycled garments, 30% acrylic, also from garments, 30% polyester that comes from plastic bottles. And as you're knitting it, you can see, I don't think it's going to show very well, but you can see other colours. So there's bits of blue and bits of green, bits of orange. I don't think that's showing on the camera. But it's so soft. This is going to be my new favourite yarn for garments. I'm definitely using this again. I've got this from Wool Warehouse. I can't remember how much it cost, but I know it wasn't expensive. Um, I feel it was about three pounds a ball or something. Three something a ball maybe, and I've got five balls. I don't think it costs any more than 15 pounds. Like it was under 20. But it's beautiful and that's the shade rose and i would definitely be using it again it's 100 grams on there um sorry <laughs> multitasking i'm <laughs> playing with my at the same time um but it is beautiful it's really lovely yarn so i'm really pleased with that so that's that um can't find that oh yeah there it is so definitely doing that again um next up uh, what should we do next, Milo? Should we do a bit of red work? Right, so let me just get this from over here. Hold on. Get my bar now. I was really excited about week. I got a message to say my delivery from uh, Dandelion Designs was on its way, and I thought I haven't ordered anything. What have I ordered? And I'd forgotten that my lampshade club was due. So this is the summer lampshade. So it's all summer themed. So what we've got? We've got a sandcastle, an ice cream. Beach hut, chips, a seagull, and a bucket and a spade. And I think that is absolutely beautiful. Sorry, whizzing that round so fast. I really, really loved stitching this one up. I think it's really pretty. I'm having my arm shaking off as I speak. So that's that. I have got some other red work to show you, but it's going to be a bit awkward now to try and show you with him shaking my arm 100 miles an hour. Okay. Um, I'm also making some Mandy Shaw cushions. And they're not strictly red work. They are from Mandy Shaw's. So we've got a snowman that's felt and then backstitched. So he just needs his eyes adding. We've got a reindeer. He just needs his eyes adding. And good old Father Christmas. And he needs eyes as well. And his moustache just so long. So they're really cute. And then obviously they'll be backed in material as well so they are super cute i had i've got two oh no let me show you my dress so let me just set this up i 
have been loving this material for ages. Let me just sit this up. Hold on, Milo. And it's rose and pebble material, and it's bee themed. It's my usual um, sew over it Betty dress, the one I do all the time. The one I'm wearing a Betty dress at the moment, and this is another Betty. Uh, but it's got bees on it, so exactly the same as this, but with bees and rose and hubble. Well, this dress has been the bane of my life. Um, I'm pleased with it, but it's taken quite a while to do, it's taken about a week to do. Anyway, I was working on it last week and I phoned my mum and said, Oh, really impressed with myself. I said, I've done this seam called princess seam and it's really pretty well not pretty really effective and neat and tidy she said oh never heard of a princess seam before so i explained to her what a princess seam was um turns out it's actually called a french seam <laughs> but i renamed it the princess seams and i think i prefer princess seam although this morning i decided i was going to wear my be dress because it was lovely and warm here today it's the uh 8th of july i think today and it's lovely and warm so i was going to wear my bee dress today put it on exactly the same i do not know how many of these betty dresses i may have made i must have made 20 maybe nothing different put it on and it went on it did up but breathing was going to be an optional extra so i thought What's wrong with it? So I mentioned it to my mum this morning and she said, probably because of your French seams. I wanted to say princess again. Probably because of your French seams. So I've just sat there now, just taken my little Samuel to school. That's why I call my channel Sam, uh, So Sweet Samuel, because I do, it should be Oh So Sweet Samuel, because I'm always saying, oh, you're so sweet, Samuel. Oh, you're so sweet, Samuel. So I should really rename it Oh So Sweet Samuel. Um, and I sat there this morning and I undid the side seams of the dress, undid the French seams of the sides and I've re-stitched that this morning just before I came on. So fingers crossed that should help. And then I like to do, I don't know if I've done it on this one, can't see, can't see, but on this one can you see I've gone round the arms and round the hem in a yellow thread just to um, complement the bees. So that should now fit. So I hope I'll be wearing that tomorrow. So that's good with my princess seams. I think princess seams is much nicer than French seams, personally. Um, one other thing then to show you that I've been making. This arrived last Thursday and I decided I was going to get it started straight away because if I didn't, I would fall behind again. So this is the New Secret Society by Mandy Shaw. It is too late to join now, but you can buy other patterns from Mandy Shaw, who's Dandelion Designs. And this is the new uh, block and it's going to be all nursery rhyme themed. So this is Ring a Ring of Roses. So I've just got uh, one full girl to do and then one just her shoes and her hair and then all the little roses and it's being stitched in a brighter red so it's um, cotton broder and it's a brighter red and i believe Mandy said this has been um made specifically for her so normally you do your red work in like a darker red but this has been done in that so every every month you'll get another one to do And then I've got some acquisitions I haven't got any. Um, I've got this lovely yarn from Giddy Yarns. And this is the colour play, the Daisy Fairy. Now, when I was little, I absolutely loved the flower fairies. And I had it in one bedroom when I was little. And then we, we moved. My parents used to love moving. They used to buy doer uppers. And they would buy a house, they would do it up and then move on. So I don't think my mum had long done my bedroom. And then we moved and she had to redo my bedroom again in flower fields. I don't need any yarn. I really don't. But when I saw this, Milo, where are you? 
just see what he wants. Sorry, I'll take you with me again. See what he wants. What do you want? Do you want this? Come on then. Let's throw it for him again. Sorry. <sighs> Go get it. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. Go get it. Go get it. Um, when I saw this was a flower fairy themed yarn by Giddy Yarns, I just had to have it and I just think it's beautiful. So it's obviously very, I was going to say it's very heavily yellow, but actually when I pull the band up, it's, it's very pink as well. So it's sort of equal amounts of pink and yellow with little speckles of green and darker red. And actually now I'm looking at that, I think, I bought a, I don't often buy a knitting magazine, but I bought this knitting magazine the other week because I really like this knitted fruit. Not that I've got anybody to knit toy fruit before. I really like these little things. A watermelon and an orange. And I really like them. And then in here, let's see if I can find it. Hold on. Um, page 36. Page 36. What tells you, page? No. And so I couldn't find the pages on the page, the numbers on the page. <coughs> so if there's a bigger picture, no, uh, no. And I really like this shawl in here. And it's knit, well, you can knit it from five, 25 mini skeins. I suppose a fading mini skein. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit it in this. And then whatever colour... I end up at the end with, whether that be pink or yellow, I will find a mini skein just to do the final bit, because I presume you end up here, I don't know, or do you start there and maybe you start, I'll start with the darkest, so you start at the top and come down. Okay, so yes, I think I will um, use that. I think that'd be really pretty and then whichever cup I end with I will find a mini skein be that pink or yellow so that's an acquisition the other acquisition I had was summer craft pod now this one has caused sort of palpitations in me this time because there is something in here I really do not like but I'm going to do it so as always I love craft pots so so I'm not you know I'm not bothered so in here you get your little welcome letter that tells you what's included <clears throat> what your projects are and so on and then you get a tea bag and this is English breakfast tea so that's yummy I'll, I'll take that out now then you get a hoop a little hoop you get your threads are all sort of greeny colours really quite a dark khaki green and then a nice bright green and three other green three other greens yeah you get some stuffing a little bit of felt some some felt some pins and the first project which i just love i think this is so cute oh and so yeah so <laughs> the first project which i think is really cute is this little water lily pin cushion and as always, you get all the instructions as to how to make it. I'm not going to show that because obviously I've paid for this, but it's beautiful. And you even, the stuffing is green to go inside the lily pad. So I will make this. I won't have this made for my next video because I do hope to be back very, very soon. But I certainly will be making this very soon. And then you get the uh, templates to do this. The next project we've got is the bit that is giving me palpitations. I will make it because I do have a friend that likes these, but it's the dragonfly. I have quite a phobia of dragonflies. They frighten me. I do think, now I'm always gonna contradict myself here because I do think they are quite pretty. The colors are pretty. I will give you that if you are a dragonfly lover. But it's the speed at which they come at you I don't like. That frightens me. But I do have a friend who I think would like that embroidery. 
Also in there was a heat erasable pen. Sorry, my phone's ringing now. I'll get that in a minute. Heat erasable pen to draw the, t uh, the transfer on. Um, but yeah, they do frighten me. So that's a bit of a problem. Okay, so that's all my crafty makes for this month so far. This month um, is Christmas in July, as you know as I'm sure you know if you're a crafter. So I have been doing a few Christmassy projects. Um, I'm going to do a craft fair in, a, in November, so I've been making some bits for that, and I've been making some Christmas presents as well. Um, and I'm going to start, I'm going to have a go at making some project bags. Now I made this project bag, I've shown this before. I made this project bag for myself uh, a couple of years ago and I really I do like it and you can get an awful lot in there and I'm planning on making some project bags for some friends and I want to include a pocket on the front a big pocket on the front of the project bag and a big pocket on the back so that is my project to try probably next week next week's quite a busy week Samuel's got his confirmation and his year five um, end of term uh, show and next week will be manic so he's got dancing on monday night his confirmation on tuesday night his end of term show on wednesday night normally he goes to a cooking class on a wednesday night and he's doing some fantastic cooking but this next week he's going to go to his cooking class on the thursday night so he'll miss football which is quite good actually because he's coming home from school on a thursday absolutely exhausted so tired bless him um so next week's going to be a bit manic, so I need to pace myself next week. I am getting, trying to get better at pacing myself. I'm not very good at it, but I am trying to get better now at pacing myself because I was going to do something yesterday. I thought if I do it, I'm just going to be exhausted. So what am I reading? What have I been watching? So watching, I watched a really good drama and I think it was on BBC One on a Monday and Tuesday night and it was called Sherwood. And it was loose based on a true story set probably in the 1990s or early 2000s. No, maybe set early 2000s. But it was set in Nottingham, obviously, because it was called Sherwood. And it was um, based on two murders that had happened as a result of the miners' strike in the 1980s and sort of almost like a, um, a revenge killing for the minor strike. I think it was a six-parter, but it was ever so, ever so good. I really enjoyed it. The first episode was hard going and slow, but I do always say to my husband, Mark, and to my mum, you know, the first episode, they're sort of setting the scene and getting you ready. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, I'd highly recommend that show. You can now get that, obviously, on iPlayer on catch up and I would recommend that's really good uh, very loosely based on true events um, I've watched two really good films I watched Go The House of Gucci that was on Prime that was very good that was a true story as well Milo stop it that was a true story as well um, really enjoyed that that had Lady Gaga in it as the main uh, character as the lead character bring it back <sighs> wants to play and then he doesn't let me have his toys and then the other day we also watched Aretha which was based on Aretha Thank Franklin I think oh, oh, my teeth based on Aretha Franklin and that was really good I didn't realize she had such a hard life she had um two children um she had her first child age 12 and her second child age 14 as the result of abuse and rape by a family friend um, which obviously impacted on the rest of her life as well. But that was a really good <clears throat> film, really enjoyed that. Reading, um, I'm part of a knitting group called uh, The One With The Knitting Friends, Lucy from This Nanny Knits and Karen from Knitting and Labradors are the hosts of that knitting group. And we have a book club and the last book we read was Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Come here for a cuddle, come here. Come eat for a cuddle. Sorry, just wrestling a cockapoo. Come here, sit down so everybody can see this monster. 
<laughs> the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And um, you could almost imagine this was a true story. The person, we, we had our book club, I think it was last week, and I said, you know, the person this character reminds me of is, um, oh, what's her name? The one that's been married hundreds of times. Oh, what's her name? Uh, Elizabeth Taylor. You could almost imagine her as the main character. And it's based on this woman then, and she is a Mexican actress, and she, well, she wants to become an actress. And it's how she struggles to find fame and fortune. And she marries somebody first of all to almost to get a <laughs> snorting. Are you snorting? Are you snorting? <laughs> um, uh, she marries her first husband as a passport to get herself into the film industry. And she quite loves him. She lies about her age to marry this man, but she does sort of love him. And then she has to divorce him to marry somebody else in order to further her career. And she really loved this second man she married. But he ended up being abusive and violent to her. So eventually she divorces him. Uh, she has another very short marriage, really, really short hours. Um, and it's all just about her struggles with her childhood and her career and how she, the things she does. But she'd asked this young um, journalist to write her memoirs. And uh, um, th this journalist can understand why she had been asked to write her memoirs for her. And then there is a real twist at the end of the story as to why she has chosen this girl. Because she says to this girl, you can write my story, but you must not publish it until I die. I'm not going to pay you for writing my story, but I will not publish it until I die. Until you must not publish it until I die. And then all the money from the sale of this book is yours and you will make millions of pounds. So the girl is very intrigued as to why. And, uh, but she agrees to do the story and then discovers why she has been chosen. And I'm not gonna tell you the reason why she's been chosen because it's quite sad, but quite a twist. And you can almost see why Evelyn did this. And it also reveals her true love as well. So this book, went from sort of the 1950s right up to the 19, well up to 2000s. And it was about all her relationships and you discover who her true love was in all those relationships. So anyway, that's it for now. That's all I'm going to say um, for now. I'm sorry, obviously my co-presenter has been noisy again. He's being a monkey again, but it's too hot to go and sit up in the loft. And he's got to learn, hasn't he? So anyway, um, it'd be lovely if you tell me what you're working on in the comments. Are you embracing Christmas in July? Are you doing that? Um, what are you knitting? What's on your needles at the moment? Do you have any book recommendations? Any movie, TV recommendations? Be lovely to hear if you do. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you for now and hope to see you soon. Take care, bye.